Hello there, very good evening and welcome to the news tonight, your one stop for the day's top stories. I'm Tracy Shilshi and here are the headlines. Prime Minister Narendra Modi inaugurates the 11th Civil Services Day, tells uh, bureaucrats to change their mindset about the government being an enabling entity and not a mere regulator. Finance Minister Arun Jaitley raises the H-1B visa issue with U.S. Commerce Secretary Wilbur Ross, told that the U.S. is in the process of reviewing H-1B visa issues and no decision has been taken yet. Supreme Court questions the Centre on making Aadhaar mandatory for procuring PAN cards, asks how can it be forced on people. And in Paris, police officers searched the premises of the slain shooter who took the life of a policeman and injured two others seriously. Campaigning for Sunday's presidential elections come to a halt. Our top story this evening, India has categorically said that any artificial check on visas in any country will be fought legally, both bilaterally and in the WTO as well. The statement comes in the wake of the H-1B visa curbs being mulled by the U.S., and similar restraints being announced by the UK, Australia and even New Zealand. The government said that Indians have gone to Western nations not to immigrate with accumulated wealth, but to actively serve the countries in their development. The H-1B visa was the hot topic for Union Finance Minister Arun Jaitley when he met US Commerce Secretary Wilbur Ross in Washington, D.C. on Friday, pointing out that US Indians are contributing to America's development in a big way Jaitley asked the U.S. administration to review its visa policy in its own interest. Before Jaitley's meeting, the External Affairs Ministry also cautioned the U.S. administration about its move. You know, it is not an immigration issue, as we have said earlier. It's basically a trade and services issue. There is a mutuality of interest is involved over here. There are Indian companies, Indian workers in the United States. There are also United States companies in India. As you know, very large United States companies, and I don't need to name them, in the IT sector, uh, which, which dominate the world, the multilaterals. Jaitley is in Washington to attend the annual spring meeting of the International Monetary Fund and the World Bank. On his agenda are meetings with his counterparts from the US, Australia and the European countries. Commerce Minister Nirmala Sitharaman has already set the tone for his talks by saying that India could take up the visa issue with the WTO. United States, uh, UK, Australia and very quickly New Zealand and so on. Countries now very clearly uh, raising protectionist walls as regards uh, service trade. Um, it is time that we have a global framework on uh, moderating I wouldn't want to use the word regulating, moderating, giving a framework within which trade and services can happen. That's one issue. We will be actively pursuing it in the WTO. The Indian government is also in talks with the industry on how to comply with salary issues of their employees. Discussions are also on with other countries who are considering following the U.S. steps that could impact Indian professionals abroad. The implications of the changes that will come about in the visa regimes will be part of our conversations. Uh, on these matters with the concerned countries. The government has clearly stated that Indian immigrants are not asylum seekers. They contribute to the development of their destination nations with high caliber skills. As such, visa regimes designed to restrict their entry could only end up dampening the progress of these countries. Be it USA, Australia or New Zealand, these are just executive orders and it had to be enacted by law of their respective parliament and that will take some time. India will have that legroom to campaign before the governments and legislators of that country and also take measures inside our own country so that they can understand the impact of these enactments. Akhilesh Suman for Raj Sawa Television with Kamal Professor Narayan in Delhi. Prime Minister Narendra Modi on Friday asserted that he did not lack the political will needed to carry out reforms. Addressing bureaucrats on Civil Services Day, the Prime Minister asked them to break barriers and stereotypes and work together as a team to perform and transform. He said that it was time for out-of-the-box thinking and the government now needs to be an enabler. Asking senior officers to introspect if their experience is becoming a burden, Modi spoke about hierarchy in bureaucracy continuing to remain an issue 
which was inherited from colonial, colonial rulers. He also suggested the use of social media, e-governance and mobile governance as a means for them to reach out to the people. Political willpower can reform kar sakta hai. Lekin bureaucratic system, governance ye perform karta hai. Aur jan bhaagidari transform karti hai. Hame in tino ko ek wavelength mein chalana bhoot zaruri hai. जब हम तीनों को एक वेवलेंथ में चलाते हैं तो हमें इच्छित परिणाम मिलता है मीनवाल होम मिनिस्टर राजनाथ सिंह ऑन फ्राइडे आस्ट ऑल द स्टेट्स टू इंश्योर सेफ्टी ऑफ कश्मीरीज लिविंग इन डिफरेंट पार्ट्स ऑफ द कंट्री कंडेमिंग द अलेज इंसिडेंट्स ऑफ हरासमेंट ऑफ कश्मीरीज द होम मिनिस्टर सेड दैट दे आर लाइक एनी अदर इंडियन सिटीजंस एन एडवाइजरी इज बीइंग सेंट टू द होम मिनिस्टर बाय द होम मिनिस्ट्री टू ऑल द स्टेट्स टू इंश्योर द सेफ्टी एंड सिक्योरिटी ऑफ पीपल फ्रॉम द वैली His statement came amidst reports alleging that Kashmiri students in Rajasthan and Uttar Pradesh were being threatened after the latest incidents of stone pelting and assault on security personnel by Kashmiri youths in the valley. The Home Minister said that a proper inquiry should be initiated in each case and that the strongest possible action should be taken against the guilty. I appeal to all of the ministers to make this decision that if any Kashmiri has been able to do with any Kashmiri, देश के किसी भी हिस्से में नहीं होनी चाहिए क्योंकि वह भी भारत के एक सम्मानित नागरिक हैं मैंने आज गृह सचिव को भी कहा है कि इस संबंध में सभी राज्यों को तुरंत एडवाइजरी जारी कर दी जाए मीनवाल चाइना ऑन फ्राइडे वोन दैट इंडिया विल पे डियरली इफ इट कंटिन्यूज प्लेइंग द दलाई लामा कार्ड डिसमिसिंग इंडिया रियक्शन टू बीजिंग रीनेमिंग सिक्स प्लेस इन अरुणाचल प्रदेश चाइना से दर इंडिया शुड सीरियसली थिंक एज टू वाई इट टुक दी एक्शन China also claimed that the region does not belong to India just because the Dalai Lama says so. The latest attack on India comes just days after Beijing announced that it's renaming six places in Arunachal Pradesh that China claims as its territory. India has dismissed the action stating that every inch of the state belongs to the country and that no foreign country has the right to rename any part of India. In more national news, the Supreme Court on Friday said that it will decide on whether Aadhaar card can be made mandatory for filing of income tax returns next week. The Apex Court asked the government to justify the need for making Aadhaar card mandatory for filing IT returns. Attorney General Mukul Rahadki, appearing for the centre, told a bench there were instances that one person was having a number of PAN cards and these fake cards were being misused. The bench, meanwhile, postponed the matter on the 25th of April. The union government uh, last month had provided, had in fact made providing one's Aadhaar number a compulsory detail for filing IT returns and for obtaining and retaining the permanent account number. Food and Consumer Affairs Minister Ramvilas Paswan today said that service charge in hotels and restaurant bills is totally voluntary and not mandatory. The minister also added that hotels and restaurants can now cannot decide the service charge which is entirely at the customer's discretion. He maintained that these guidelines will be sent to the states for necessary action. As per the guidelines, the column of service charge in a bill will be left blank for customers to fill up before they make up the final payment. Service charge is not a name of the name. It is a tips name. What do you want to give tips? 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 For this reason, we sent it to them. और वो इसको आज हम लोग जो गाइडलाइन जारी कर रहे कर दिया है। And ahead of the MCD polls, Delhi Chief Minister Arvind Kejriwal on Friday accused the BJP of trying to cover up its corruption in the three municipal corporations by projecting the name of Prime Minister Modi. He, however, asserted that a strategy by the BJP would not work, citing poor sanitation in the national capital. He also added that the only hope for the people of Delhi is the Aam Aadmi Party. The party national convener also accused the BJP of completely destroying the MCD during its 10-year rule. The elections to all the 272 wards of the three civic bodies where the BJP, Congress and the AAP are locked in a triangular battle will be held on Sunday. And if you vote for BJP, for 10 years, the government of the BJP has been clean in the MCD. For 10 years, the BJP has not been clean in Delhi. तो जो पार्टी 10 साल में दिल्ली साफ नहीं कर पाई 10 साल में मच्छर नहीं हटा पाई वो पार्टी अब आने वाले समय में दिल्ली साफ कैसे करेगी तो अगर आप बीजेपी को वोट देते हैं तो आप ये सोच लेना कि आने वाले पाँच साल में दिल्ली में ऐसी गंदगी रहेगी 
आने वाले पाँच साल में ऐसे ही मच्छर रहेंगे आने वाले पाँच साल में ऐसे ही डेंगू होता रहेगा चिकनगुनिया होता रहेगा मच्छर के दिमाग वाला व्यक्ति इस तरीके की बात कर सकता है क्योंकि 524 करोड़ का बजट इनके हाथ में था और इनको एडवर्टाइजिंग करनी थी डेंगू के मच्छरों से दिल्ली को बचाने के लिए कि पानी जमा ना होने दें कूड़ा इकट्ठा ना होने दें साफ पानी को यहाँ यहाँ व्यवस्थित करें वगैरह वगैरह लेकिन वहाँ इन्होंने अरविंद केजरीवाल और अपनी आम आदमी पार्टी की तस्वीरें जो हैं वो लगा इन्होंने वो पैसा खर्च किया कांग्रेस पार्टी खास तौर के ऊपर रजौरी गार्डन के बाई इलेक्शन के बाद में जिस तेजी से उभरी है 9 परसेंट से हम 33 परसेंट वोट पर जो पहुंचे हैं कहीं ना कहीं के ऊपर कांग्रेस पार्टी खतरे की घंटी भारतीय जनता पार्टी और केजरीवाल दोनों के लिए बनकर के उभरी है But the Congress today expelled Barkha Shukla Singh for six years, a day after she criticized its Vice President Rahul Gandhi and Delhi Unit Chief Ajay Makin and quit as the local women's wing chief. The disciplinary committee of the party removed her for what it called indulging in anti-party activities days ahead of the municipal polls. Singh, who had yesterday vowed not to quit the party, hit out at Rahul Gandhi, saying that the decision proved his mental bankruptcy, quote-unquote, and added that she will take legal recourse against it. The four-member disciplinary committee comprised of former Delhi Minister Narendra Nath, former Mahila Congress Chief Abha Chaudhary, and party leaders Mehmood Zia and Surendra Kumar. देखिए वजह से ज़्यादा समय महत्वपूर्ण है तो कोई ऐसा इंसिडेंस तो है नहीं कि जो भी परसों हुआ और कल बरखा जी को निर्णय लेना पड़ा तो ये सीधे सीधे ये भार, भारतीय जनता पार्टी की घबराहट है और अब केजरीवाल जी भी सीधे हम लोगों के ऊपर हमला करना शुरू हुए हैं ये करना पंद्रह साल से ना तो चुनाव हुए हैं इलेक्शन कमीशन खुला हुआ है कोर्ट खुली हुई है मैं उन लोगों में से नहीं हूँ मैंने जब कह दिया तो कह दिया और हम यही रहेंगे यही लड़ेंगे और राहुल गांधी मुक्त कांग्रेस का अभियान चलाएंगे इन यूपी नाउ द योगी आदित्यनाथ गवर्नमेंट ऑन फ्राइडे पुट स्टॉप टू द यूज ऑफ रेड एंड ब्लू बीकन्स विद इमीडिएट इफेक्ट आदित्यनाथ आल्सो डिसाइडेड टू कट बैक ऑन सिक्योरिटी टू वीआईपीस ही हाउएवर एडेड दैट इमरजेंसी सर्विसेज लाइक फायर ब्रिगेड्स एंबुलेंसेस व्हीकल्स ऑफ आर्म्ड फोर्सेस एंड पुलिस विल बी एग्जेम्प्टेड फ्रॉम द बैन The order was issued in the wake of a similar decision by the union cabinet a few days back. The UP chief minister also congratulated the prime minister for taking the step and saying that it will help in ending the VIP culture in the country. Lal Bati logon ko sabko malum rehta hai ki Lal Bati mein VIP sab baithta hai mantri aur mukhmantri. Satangvadi shaktiya hai. Khatra to hai. Chinhit ho gaya kisi gaadi mein. किसी पर भी अटैक कर सकता है इतना अच्छी बात है अब द लेट्स टेक इट थ्रू सम मोर अपडेट्स फ्रॉम अक्रॉस द कंट्री इन नेशन वाइड मोर देन 14 लाख लॉयर्स अक्रॉस द कंट्री ऑब्जर्वड अ हाफ डे स्ट्राइक ऑन फ्राइडे द लॉयर्स वर प्रोटेस्टिंग अगेंस्ट द लॉ कमीशन रिकमेंडेशंस इंक्लूडिंग अ प्रपोजल टू बैन स्ट्राइक्स बाय एडवोकेट्स द लॉ कमीशन हैड सजेस्टेड दैट लॉयर्स शुड बी स्लैप्ड विद पेनल्टीज इफ दे रिजॉर्ट टू अ स्ट्राइक The Delhi High Court dismissed the Aam Aadmi Party's plea for the use of VV Pat machines in the MCD poll scheduled on the 23rd of April. The court says it cannot pass such an order at the last minute. The party has alleged that the EVMs to be used in the polls were obsolete and open to tampering. While the Delhi poll panel said that the question raised by the Aam Aadmi Party was sending a wrong message to the voters. West Bengal Chief Minister Mamata Banerjee has been re-elected as chairperson of the All India Trinamool Congress for six more years. She urged all regional parties to come together for the sake of the nation while terming it as the need of the hour. She further alleged that the BJP is defaming Hinduism and riots cannot be religion. Mamata also said that she is proud of all religions, including hers. Telangana Chief Minister K Chandrasekhar Rao was also unanimously re-elected as the president of the Telangana Rashtra Samiti on Friday as Rao's election was announced the party leaders and workers raised the slogans and distributed sweets 
Rao formed the party in 2001 and has been holding its plenary today in Hyderabad and would organize a massive public meeting on the 27th of April in Warangal. The Delhi High Court dismissed a petition to stop the practice of triple talaq on Hindu women married to Muslim men. The court said that the law laid down by the Supreme Court in this matter will be applicable to all and that all women are entitled to equal protection under the law. With a quick break here, we'll be back with the top international stories in a bit. Stay with us. Kaziranga National Park, a World Heritage Site, 430 square kilometer area sprinkled with elephant grass meadows, swampy lagoons and dense forests is home to more than 2,200 Indian one-horned rhinoceros, approximately two-thirds of their total world population. The park is also the breeding ground of elephants, wild water buffaloes and swamp deer. Over the time, the tiger population has also increased in Kaziranga. In 1981, when I joined Archaeological Survey of India, I was uh, given uh, to explore mm. the district Riva, extreme north of uh, Madhya Pradesh. Orient Stopa. That was a very exciting discovery by me. That site is a very important site. Today, it is a nationally protected monument. Watch Eureka with Dr. Fari Kant Mishra, retired regional director at ASI Kolkata, only on Rajya Sabha Television. Unakoti, the famous Shaiva pilgrimage spot in Tripura, dates back to the 8th and 9th century. The name means one less than a crore. It owes its origin to an interesting legend that says Lord Shiva, who was on his way to Kashi, stopped here for a night halt along with gods and goddesses. Together, their number totaled one crore. At sunrise the next day, Lord Shiva was incensed to find all the gods and goddesses still asleep, cursing them to become stone images. He left alone for Kashi. Unakoti, apart from its rock-cut carvings, has an imposing Shiva head called the Unakotishwara Kalbherar. Other eye-catching works include three enormous images of Nandi bull that are half buried in the ground and a gigantic Ganesh. To this day, the logistics of these huge carvings remain a mystery. Welcome back. Let's get you some international news now. And the EU foreign policy chief, uh, Federica Mogherini, on Friday arrived in New Delhi. And during her two-day visit, she is likely to push for resumption of talks with the India-EU free trade agreement. Mogherini met External Affairs Minister Sushma Swaraj to discuss preparations for the annual India-EU summit scheduled to be held in Delhi later this year. She is also expected to hold delegation-level talks with Minister of State for External Affairs, M.G. Akbar, covering bilateral, regional and global issues. Mogherini is also play, uh, slated, in fact, to meet Prime Minister Narendra Modi. However, the main focus of her visit is to push for early resumption of talks on the free trade pact between the two sides. Now to France, where just hours after the shooting attack in Paris left one police officer dead and two seriously injured, police teams headed to the home of the slain attacker to get more details. This even as the Islamic State has claimed responsibility for the shooting. 
Remember this shooting incident coming just days before the presidential elections to be held in France. And as world leaders are now responding to the attack, a U.S. President Donald Trump, in fact, saying that this is going to have a big effect on the elections on Sunday. Police officers searching the home of the suspected Paris attacker who was identified by the papers in his car. All the French authorities are yet to reveal full details. French media reports claim he was 39-year-old French national named Karim Sherfi. Reports also claim the attacker served several years in prison for firing on police officers with a gun in the early 2000s. More recently, the intelligence services identified him as a potential Islamist radical. Meanwhile, another man suspected of possible links to the attack has turned himself in to Belgian police. But details are still sketchy from the French government. C'est à la fois de la solidarité à l'égard de nos forces de l'ordre, de la victime, du policier qui a été tué évidemment de sa famille et de tous les blessés et de leur famille. Mais au-delà de cela, on le voit bien, le défi qui sera le nôtre dans les prochaines années. While the probe continues, Parisians return to work on the Champs-Élysées on Friday. Several residents and eyewitnesses recall the moments when the shooting took place. Je vais vous dire, j'ai eu très peur. J'ai eu très très peur pour ma vie. Pour ma sécurité en fait, et je me suis réfugiée euh, dans un coin, dans une rue, euh, enfin rue Frédéric Bastia, par là j'ai attendu que ça se calme un peu pendant 20 minutes. Et euh, en sortant de cette rue, j'ai filé au métro Saint-Philippe-du-Roule. Si c'est ailleurs, c'est partout, euh, non, il euh, faut continuer, faut continuer, dans le... faut continuer à vivre. Euh, on vient, je viens dans mon travail, il faut bien que je continue à venir. Euh, je connais le secteur depuis 40 ans, c'est arrivé hier, ça peut arriver demain. Ça... The attack took place as 11 candidates headed for Sunday's closely fought presidential election were engaged in a final joint TV appearance to argue their policies. Three of the four main candidates, including opinion polls leader Marine Le Pen, have called off planned events on Friday. Speaking after an emergency meeting of top security officials, Prime Minister Kazanyev said that all elite units were on top alert for the election to back up the 50,000 police already earmarked for the special election duty. Mesdames et Messieurs, le gouvernement est pleinement mobilisé. Rien ne doit entraver ce moment démocratique fondamental pour notre pays. À la veille d'un rendez-vous majeur, j'en appelle bien entendu. The first round in France's two-stage election will be held on Sunday with the final second round on the 7th of May. Bureau Report, Rajya Sabha TV. And here are more international news updates in Global Buzz. The UN Security Council on Friday condemned North Korea's latest missile test and threatened to impose new sanctions against Pyongyang for what it called highly destabilizing behavior. The council demanded that North Korea should not conduct further tests. The UN said that North Korea's illegal missile activities were greatly increasing tension in the region and beyond. The German police arrested a man suspected of detonating three bombs that targeted the Borussia Dortmund soccer team bus. Prosecutors said that they did it in the hope of ending the club's plummeting shares and making a profit on an investment. According to prosecutors, if the shares of Borussia Dortmund had fallen massively, the profit would have been several times the initial investment. Chinese President Xi Jinping was unanimously elected as a delegate to the National Congress of the ruling Communist Party of China. She was nominated by the CPC Central Committee as a candidate for the 19th CPC National Congress. Xi, regarded as the most powerful leader in the country, will complete his first five-year term during the 19th Party Congress to be held later this year and start his second five-year term. The Australian government scientific agency said on Friday that a new ocean debris drift analysis shows the missing Malaysia Airlines MH370 is most likely located in the north of the main search zone. The zone was rejected by Australia and Malaysia in January this year. MH370 disappeared while flying to Beijing from Kuala Lumpur with 239 people on board in 2014.
Well, that's all. We could back in on the news tonight. Thank you so much for joining us and we'll see you again tomorrow.